it all started like when I was a kid. Everybody says, oh, it started when I was a kid. Yeah, it really started when I was a kid. My mom and dad were teachers. My mom um, was an artist herself. So, you know, during the summer times or something like that, we'd go to the library, check out art books. Me and my brother would be sitting around drawing and all that stuff, you know, to pass the time. So I just kept going as an artist. He branched off and turned into a musician and a writer. Um, and so I just kept going with the art. As time progressed, I re realized that that's what I wanted to be for the rest of my life. When I got to VCU and, and went through VCU and all that stuff and graduated, I had to take these other jobs, but I was a graphic designer. So I was still kind of into the job, the, the, the art medium, you mm -hmm. know, but it was different because it was just graphic design. Mm -hmm. um, so kept going as an artist, wanted to do my work after work, basically just keep producing work as I, as I went along to improve myself as an artist, as a fine artist. And as soon as I lost my job back in 2016, it was June 30th, 2016, I had already been working as an artist after hours. So I was like, that's it for graphic design. I'm done with that. Now let me see what I could do with this art thing that I got going on. And so I started becoming a fine artist, but at the same time, I started producing work that was more practical for everyday use. And that's how I make my living now. Um, as a full-time artist doing exactly what I want to do, people it's now people call me and pay me to do it. That's the best mm -hmm. part about it. As a graphic designer, you have to do things within a parameter, you know. You have to have, you know, the colors that they want. You have to have this just right and, and this within the lines and this. And after a while, it just stopped being fun. So by the time I, they were, you know, I got laid off, I was ready to go anyway, almost. Mm -hmm. And so, but the thing is about that, I took that graphic design experience and that, that skill and now it works its way into what I do now, which is metal work and iron work and, and railings and tables and furniture. So all that stuff that I learned back as a graphic designer has molded into what I know now. And I don't know if there's too many people out there that are still fine artists, graphic designers and metal workers that are able to make a living off all that. I just feel like I, I what I need, you know? I do metal work um, as far as uh, railing, somebody will call me up and be like, hey, I, I need a railing for my house. I would do it, but they would allow me to do exactly what I, I, I really want to do. You know, they, they trust me basically to do the design I do. I create little free libraries. Every once in a while, I've got four in the mix right now that I've done, and I, I really love doing those. So that's kind of off of the metal work. That's more, that's more woodwork and stuff like that. But the metal work is, is basically you know, I've done dog dishes out of out of um, out of stainless steel, and just a multitude of things. You know, I've redid you know grills and stuff, and redesigned a grill and 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 stuff like that. So it's just different things where people call me, hey, I need such and such. Can you make this? Yeah, sure, I'll make it. But they understand that I'm going to make it the way I want to make it. Mm -hmm. And most, I, I haven't had any problems, so I'm, I guess I'm doing pretty good. Yeah, that feels like a pretty awesome thing, being able to turn something that you kind of need into a piece of art and just having that as a part of your life. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I could. there's so many things that I've made. I made lamps. I could have easily gone down to Target and gotten a lamp, but where's the fun in that, you know? You're buying a lamp, it might not last, it's out of materials you don't know what it is. Somebody else has the same lamp. I'm like, I can make my own lamp, make it just the way I want it to be, make it out of real materials. And I could also just have something super original, you know? Mm -hmm. And so that's the fun part of being of doing what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, so your collection of work as a whole, I noticed that there's a lot of variety from paintings to like the found object sculptures to the like commission work that you do. Yeah. Um, are there, how do you go about like exploring so many different concepts and mediums? Is it kind of something that you do one thing and then move on to the next or are they paths that you pursue simultaneously years ago i asked myself and this is like a guiding principle it's like why not me why can't i do this why can't i do this over here oh i like that painting i like that style of painting why can't i do that kind of style of painting why not so those are the things that, that and that and my my girlfriend likes to say i'm creatively add <laughs> because I got so many different things that I do. But um, the way I approach it is 
I like to try different things for the mere fact of, hey, I, I, I like that imagery or I have something to say. That's where my political work comes from. You know, if, if you saw my, you know, some of the bike sculptures that I've done in the past, I saw something online that I was like, holy crap, that blows my mind, you know? Mm-hmm. And um, and so I tried to do it. What I, what I had saw with the bikes, with the art bike project, was a guy had created these art bikes as a graphic design rendering. They weren't real, but they blew my mind. And I was like, but they're not real. I wonder if I can make them real. And so I proceeded to do the art bike project. And that's how those came about. I mean, it's just so many things that I, I love about creative people, creative you know, imagery and stuff like that, where I try to see what I can do within that realm. You know, if, if I see political work, I, I, I've started off as a political artist, but it's so many different imageries and, and, and styles that I love that I'm like, why not give that a try? See where that goes. And that's kind of how I have so many different variances of the artwork that I do. You know, it's just, it's, it, it goes back to why not me? Why, why, why can't I do something that cool, you know? Mm-hmm. But it also leads to me having a bunch of artwork in my house that... <laughs> just not going to see the light of day you know but it, it is what it is practice you know um are there any artists or anything um for any of the mediums that you work in that you like really enjoy or they kind of inspire you or your work in general just off the yeah top. um melvin edwards if you see on my website the um the 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 large sculpture that i just did that's on sharps island which is a whole thing um he melvin edwards basically creates art within you know he he used found object artwork and stuff like that and sculptures and he he has it so that he he creates things that that are provoking or thought provoking political and stuff like that but that's where i I looked at as far as my sculptural inspiration and he was the inspiration for edwards the fisherman that's on sharps island that piece is the biggest piece i've ever done in found object and I've rarely done sculptural pieces where it's a human figure mm-hmm. and I think I nailed it. Oh, <laughs> it was just so good. It's That's so good. Feeling. It just inspired me so much to do that kind of work that I'm like, that's another thing. It's like, why not me? Why can't I do a sculpture that big out of found objects and the human form? Why not? Yeah. And so I figured it out and I, and I nailed it. So. You know that goes back to that principle again mm-hmm. i just wanted to give it a try somebody gave me the opportunity and i found out that i, that I could do it so mm-hmm. i would collect like just stuff i mean if you look around my backyard i got stuff back here i got stuff back over there and it's just you just get stuff and it's like oh this is a cool thing oh i could just you know i could pick you know this up i might not even use it like mm-hmm. right now or in two years but there's going to be that one time where you're like that part right there is yeah. the best part for what i'm doing right now so those are the kind of things where you just collect stuff and it leads to have a, a virtual junkyard in your backyard but you just collect things because you have a feeling that it's going to lead to something you know i rarely ever sketch anything for edwards I just kind of sketched out a a rudimentary kind of stick figure almost Mm -hmm. as I, as I went along and was like, okay, how do I want this to proceed as far as uh, how high he needs to be, what is, how long his legs need to be and stuff like that to give it the the proportions that it needed to be. Um, So what I did was just did a little sketch, but after that, I just, the metal just started telling me what it wanted to do. So it, I let the materials tell me what to do. Because if you get caught up into doing sketches and stuff like that, you kind of bind it into the sketch project process. Mm-hmm. Whereas you start to do something, oh, this doesn't look like what I thought it, it should look like when I sketched it out. No, it's not going to because now your sketch has gone from paper to 3D. Mm-hmm. And so you let that 3D model and that 3D process take over from there and give you what it wants to oh this side doesn't look as good as i thought it would so i'm gonna change that side well that side might have been exactly what you thought it would look good on paper it's not so Mm -hmm. and and when when you come down to it when you show people you're not going to show them your sketch you're going to show them this actual piece Mm -hmm. and so you just let the the materials in the process 
tell you what it wants to be. And and you you allow yourself to listen to it. Found objects because some things found objects have um have a personality. You know, some things are just 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 cooler, you know. It's you know, you could go like you know, you can go somewhere and be like, oh, Oh, I, I found this on the street, you know. You're not going to find this in a store. Yeah. With this patina and this feeling of it and this age and the history behind that, it might be. I mean, it, something as simple as this. I can go buy this at a store nice and be, it'd be you know, as, as chrome as this and all nice and shiny. Mm -hmm. That's more interesting. Yeah. This has more, more texture to it. And so that's why you go for the found object stuff you know it, it just has that personality that you're looking for that gives it that uniqueness most of the time i'll go in already having an idea of what i want to do and so that makes it easier you know if i'm not standing there or sitting there be like what am i going to do with this i don't know you know it, that rarely happens if i have a project like i have a, a sculpture that i did in the house it's just a little one it, it was a nice piece but it, it was only like it took me like two hours to do because I already knew kind of the imagery that I want to set up mm -hmm. and I already had the materials and stuff like that. And I didn't have to fabricate any materials where sometimes I, with the ironwork and the, the railings and stuff, I have to like bend the metal and the inserts and all that stuff. So that takes a lot of time. Mm -hmm. And, um, but for this, it was like chain and then a spike and then some other stuff. And that was pretty much already done. I just needed to weld it the way I needed it to weld to give it that, that imagery. And so that was just pretty much, you know, pretty much two hours worth of work. And I was like, okay, that was a good exercise. Yeah. Most of the time when I'm doing my sculptures like that is practice. You know, I'm practicing trying to, how do I make something look like it's floating without giving it the structure and making it look like it's holding onto a structure floating. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot of practice in that. And, and with artists, you have to practice just like musicians. You have to practice your skills, your materials and all that stuff so that you can get better. So it's always a process to keep trying to, build up on what you know and what you, you're trying to accomplish the challenge is to not let yourself down yeah. and to not like not like oh just oh i got a free day today no you don't have a free day bro you got to get up and do something mm -hmm. starting start, starting to trust myself to be able to make the decisions that are the right ones to help me eat heat my house put gas in my trucks you know because i've never been under that kind of pressure you know you you, you get used to going to work doing your job somebody giving you a paycheck oh. and then you take care of all you need you know mm -hmm. um or for the most part but now it's like the challenge is to get up every day get your work done get out of the house it's no you know a lot of my friends are like you know you work for yourself you could do anything yeah i could do anything but cannot afford to do anything you know mm -hmm. like i was in the house just now and everything and i love the fact that everything I do is related to my work. Whether it's in the house working on the computer, I'm doing estimates and sending those out. Might not feel like work, but it's work. I come home, I go into my painting studio and start painting. I'm like, holy crap, this is my job too. You know, because I'm selling paintings and, and giving it out to retailers so they could sell. And so it, I'm lucky enough to have everything that I do related into my work, whether it feels like work or not. You know, I love my job. I love this job you know it's just that good mm -hmm. and so you know and i never thought it would be that way i wasn't brave enough to quit my job i had to be let go mm -hmm. and it was like the universe was like okay you've been building your wings after work for a long time it's your turn to fly mm -hmm. and right now i'm flying well this is my fifth year doing this by myself mm -hmm. and so and and you know everybody's saying if you can make it past year five you can pretty much make it um, so I'm like really building up my year to be more furniture, um, get my name out there in more markets, in Virginia, you know, I, I want to get out there a little bit because that I feel like that would assure more or more stable future, yeah. you know, nice. and also I want to I want to get kind of big enough where I could have my own workshop, my own like building almost mm -hmm. so I have to worry about the, the troubles I have to go through at my current workshop. Um, where you have a bunch of people. Another goal is to try to bring in somebody else who could do my installations for me because, you know, I'm trying to get away from having to be on site and install the, the ironwork and everything. Mm -hmm. I just need, I need to be in the workshop doing the work yeah. and somebody install it, you know. So those, those are some of the goals that I have for this year. Mm -hmm. So I got to 
got to get up, get out of the house, and go take care of that. You know, so that's that's the goal. As far as medium, I think I think I need to I want to explore more within the metal field because I'm right now I'm doing hot and cold uh, cold road steel, which is fine. That's just basic iron. Um, I'm starting to branch into stainless steel, but I need to get into aluminum. That's where I really want to be too, so I can start doing more sculptures and and hopefully that'll lead to something bigger than what I'm doing now, you know. But I'd like to get. I, I need to learn more metals and how to weld and and develop more metal skills and stuff like that. So that's one of my biggest goals. As far as other mediums, maybe not because I think I have enough on my plate. You know, I start to thin myself out too much. There's only so much time during the day, even if I take naps. <laughs> so, I mean, it's just I, I need to like be like, okay, I just need to focus on the metals and stick to painting like I'm doing and, and try to explore more within the paintings that I'm doing too. So, but yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a place where you have to stop and be like, okay, stop, reevaluate and kind of concentrate on what you're doing right now. 